living like your ancestors. How remembering our past is the cure for the present. Today, I will discuss a topic that I plan on advocating for, for the foreseeable future. I believe it's one of the greatest problems that humanity is currently facing. And I believe that a few simple fixes can actually solve many of our complex problems. Modern day problems are solely caused by modern day practices. Now let's consider the average weekday of someone who is middle-class in the Western world. Wake up at let's say 7 a.m., immediately check our phone, check emails, text messages, and scroll through social media to catch up on everything that we've missed while we were asleep. Now it's about 7.30, we take a shower, we brush our teeth, comb our hair, and then we head down to the kitchen, turn on the TV, start watching the morning news, while we make ourselves a bowl of, let's say, Lucky Charms and a glass of orange juice. So now it's 8 a.m., we get in our car, knowing that we're going to have a long commute ahead of us, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, we're going to be sitting in the car, probably listening to some music, or most often some type of podcast or political news that you are reading from your favorite political party, whatever that may be. So it's 9 a.m., we arrive to the office, and we grab a cup of coffee and a donut from the break room, and then we head to our cubicle and get to work. So we're finally at our desk, and for the next eight hours or so, we're going to be responding to emails, putting together presentations, creating and editing uh, Excel spreadsheets, all this while sitting in our cubicle, having fluorescent lights just shine down on us for <laughs> eight hours straight. We only really get up out of our seats to maybe use the bathroom or grab something quickly from the vending machine. Let's fast forward and say it's now 5 p.m. You finish your work for the day and you drive into rush hour traffic to get home to your family. So let's say an hour has passed. It's now 6 p.m. You've made it home and you head straight to the dinner table where you and your family all come together to enjoy some pre-made hamburger helper. We sit down with the family we enjoy our meal. We talk for about maybe half an hour, if that, and we discuss how our day went. And oftentimes it's the exact same answer that we gave the day prior, as in good, fine, or could be better, something of that realm, nothing too specific to say the least. So it's now 6.30, you move to your recliner, you sit down, you turn on the TV, and you turn on, whether it's Fox News or CNN, and you sit there and watch the news for another hour or so as they discuss everything that happened that day around the world. At the same time, your kids rush to their rooms, to play video games or to scroll on TikTok for the rest of the night. So now that an hour has passed and the nightly Tucker Carlson special of the hour, whatever year it may be, uh, has now finished. So you and your partner discuss what to watch next. So you scroll on Netflix and you guys decide to finish two more episodes of Stranger Things. So let's say a few hours later, you're finished with a few episodes of Stranger Things and it's 9.30, 10 o'clock, and it's time to head to bed. So you bring your phone with you, you do your last minute social media scrolling, you do your nighttime routine, then you head to bed, go to sleep as you prepare for the next day to do the exact same thing tomorrow. My intention when I talk about this kind of average schedule for the average day in the life of someone middle class, especially in America where I'm from, but now other parts of the world is not to hate on this lifestyle. I know this lifestyle because I have once lived a similar lifestyle. I'm not here to shame anyone's lifestyle choices. I'm here to point out that if we continue doing this on the macro level and we do not change our current lifestyles over a period of time, I believe that it's gonna cause an immense amount of unnecessary pain. I acknowledge that people choose to live life this way because that's what society rewards. Ultimately, so many people just simply need to provide for their families by any means. And this is the best way they know how to do it. I really think it's important to emphasize how different this lifestyle is from the lifestyle humans have had for thousands of years. I believe the lifestyle decisions that we've made over the past few decades is the reason for so many of our modern day problems. For the vast majority of our existence, Humans who lived an abundant life had the following. Access to fresh food, regular exposure to sunlight, consistent and meaningful human connections, 
spend the majority of their day connected to nature, have a strong sense of purpose by providing for their tribe. If we possess the traits that are listed above, there is a very good chance we're going to live a life with much more happiness and fulfillment in comparison to those who don't. We've had a rapid growth when it comes to technological advancement, but the problem is our brains and our bodies have not kept up at that same evolving pace. It's unreasonable to expect happiness, fulfillment, and abundance from a life that goes against our own biology. I want to make one thing clear. I'm not preaching to you that just standing under the sun for a handful of hours is going to cure all of our anxiety and depression. However, if we embody a lifestyle that promotes those qualities, history shows us that it will improve our physical, mental, and emotional health. I understand in today's world, this advice that I'm giving you oftentimes just falls on, on deaf ears because well, why would we do these things and change our lifestyles when we've been told that we can just take a magic pill that will solve all our problems? Society and other forces that we don't completely understand have influenced our lives in a way where it clouds our perception from living a life that we know we're destined to live. If we do not make conscious efforts to change this and we continue to go down the same path that we're going down now, we are going to see even more people who struggle with anxiety, depression, diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. I want to make one thing very clear. When it comes to the question of how humans should live their life, along with every other crucial question that comes with living, the answers that we seek are already inside of us. The deeper, more complex negative emotions that so many of us face serve as a check engine light to make us realize that either physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, something is incorrect and that there is a problem with our current way of operating. The world around us has clouded our judgment, putting many of us in a position to ignore the innate feelings that we all have that show us how to navigate our lives. It is our responsibility to live in a way that serves us and our community, despite how strong and how loud the outside voices may be. Over the next few weeks, I'll be providing videos and guides that will show us how we can actually shut out the noise. I'm doing this to make sure that we can all enable ourselves to live more intentional and fulfilled lives. I hope today's video serves you the same way it served me. Before I end this video, I just want to make a quick side note. Last week's video got viral, which I never thought would actually happen, to be honest with you, but I'm so incredibly happy that it did. So thankfully that video now has thousands of views and it actually tripled my amount of subscribers for my YouTube channel and also my newsletter. So if this isn't a sign to keep going, I don't know what is. So I'm extremely happy. It's adding more fuel to the fire and I'm so excited to see where this newsletter, the videos, and my presence on their social media platforms, what it grows into over the next few years. So thank you all for being part of the journey. I love you all so incredibly much and I'll see you next week.